Hi. All right, what's up, guys? Doomsday Bros here. <laughs> Take uh, three or four or five. Who knows? <laughs> These are our early reviews, so... We've been interrupted a few times today. We've got kids around and whatnot, so bear with us. Uh, but we're going to get this done for so you. Today, what we got coming at you is the Sig Sauer P290. It's a Sig's newer incarnation of a pocket pistol. So we got Jeremy uh, giving you some, some rundown on, on the basics here. What do you got for us? Okay, so what it comes with um, out of the box that you'll see is the gun. And then I think it only comes with two mags. I don't know if one of them is extended that it usually comes with. Um, I have, you know, four mags all together. Um, this one right here is the extended magazine. It uh, is eight plus one in the hole. It uh, gives you a nice little pinky extension here so you can get a full you know, grip on the gun if that's what you want. Now this is a special edition, so does it come with anything additional? It you know? does. This is, so this is the first edition um, and what it does is it comes with these special um, not sure here, special exchangeable grip plates here and they just pop in like that, you know. It says first edition on it. It's kind of cool, I guess, if you wanted to put it up somewhere as you know, just like a collector's gun or whatever. It could be, yeah, it'd be nice if you had it in a gun safe or something. Yeah. I don't know if I'd carry it every day with those. On I wouldn't it. carry it every day just because the texture isn't as good as on these as it is on the regular grips. Definitely. Um, so, um, other than that, you know, you get the regular mag. It's six plus one in the hole, and that sits nice and flush. So, um, we do have off to the side here some miscellaneous data on it. If you want to, on the video at any time. Um, just pause it and you can see this information here. Yeah, we won't hit on every one of those points. But, you know, if you want to see it, it's there. Um, anything more, just Google it and, or go on SIG's website or something. Um, we're going to get right into the positives of this gun. So we have a sheet printed out here for all the positives. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is dimensions. It is a really nicely sized pistol. Um, 0.9 inches at the slide, um, and that's on SIG's website. It does say, you know, we found other places where it says 1.1, and I'm assuming that's the slide release and the mag release or something like that. Um, but overall, you know, it's pretty much the exact same dimensions as like a CAR PM9 or CM9, which is, you know, really good dimensions for something that you're trying to carry. Um, and then moving on to the next, the uh, grip texture, as far as this part of the ergonomics is really nice. Um, all this grip texture is... It's like sandpaper. It, it really holds on. It, it's really easy to hold on to and fits in your hand really nicely. Um, so no complaints there as far as um, sticking on, you know, some third-party, you know, grip coverings or something like that that you'll see on a lot of people put on Glocks and whatnot. I don't really think this gun needs that. After that, it does have the exchangeable grips, um, which is kind of nice. They were going to have, I mean, I've seen things where they're supposed to have a whole bunch of other colors for these um, grips, but... I haven't seen any, so I guess you could dirt coat them if you wanted to, some different colors. Um, but, yeah. Uh, another nice thing about this, you can get a laser mount, and this right here just pops off. Um, it's just a little rubber stopper there. You break down the gun, pops out, and you can get your uh, laser to mount right into that pretty seamlessly. I do wish they would have done a Picatinny nice. because breaking this gun down, as we will talk about later, is not the <coughs> easiest thing in the world to do. It's a pain. So yeah, you can put a laser on there, but uh, once you put it on, you're probably leaving it on most of the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, next positive here, you know, it's a SIG, so it's going to be a very reliable gun. Um, not any issues as far as that goes in our testing of it. and You know, we put uh, a few hundred rounds through it and haven't had any problems with it, so and that's you know, all sorts of just you know PMC or whatever we could find for pretty cheap. We haven't shot a lot of crazy stuff through it. And then on to the next, we got sex appeal. For both, of, for me at least, uh, I think this is a really nice looking gun. Um, I'd say you know it's a sexy gun. Looks good. I I don't mind owning it. You know, compared to a Glock, I think it does look better than a Glock or you know, something like that. I agree. Um, it's a good looking gun. Yeah. It's got some cool, interesting features. It's got a contoured slide stop here. I think that looks really good. Yeah. You don't get that in most pocket pistols. Yeah. And this this slide stop, um, this the texturing they have on these grooves, it is really nice. It makes it easy to grip on when you're you know releasing the slide and things like that. Definitely. Um, moving on, you got the sights on here. This particular gun has the Sig night sights on it. Um, 
which work very well at night and things like that. We've done some night shooting with it. Um, I don't know if we have any video that we're going to put in, but we might put in some video of that. Um, and then, uh, last thing, the slide stop is kind of a plus and a minus. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Yeah, that goes both ways for sure. Yeah. So, moving on, now we got the negatives on this gun. Um, and we got the whole breakdown of them right here. Uh, Josh's printer is not printing red, it's printing pink instead today. So <laughs> Yeah, over here, this is supposed to be green. That's supposed to be red. Yeah. Whatever, we'll go with it. So, um, it's breast cancer awareness. Uh, the mag release, we really do not like. Um, this thing is terrible. This thing sticks out so far. I don't know if you can see that. One of my very least well. favorite things about the gun. Yeah. Um, it sticks out way too far. And the way that you grip this gun, um, when you get your, when you, if you're trying to get a high grip on it, and your finger comes around, I've only had this happen once, but Josh has had it happen multiple times. Um, when you're shooting this gun, you can get your finger up over it if you're not, you know, paying attention to it. And when you squeeze on like a pullback or something, it can actually actuate that mag release and your, your mag will pop out, but you won't notice it. And then when your gun goes to cycle, it doesn't cycle that next round. And if you're using a big, solid two-hand grip, it only accentuates that problem. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it really threw me off. I didn't know what was going on with the gun the first couple of times. I didn't even realize I was hitting the mag release. Yeah. For the majority of people, they're right-handed unless you're wrong-handed like Josh. Um, and this is, gonna be on, this is gonna be on the inside of your hip like that. And if it got pushed up against it, I, I wouldn't say it'd be that difficult to actuate that and then it might pop out just a little bit and if you needed to go for your gun and use it yeah, yeah you could get your first round off because you're probably carrying it most people carry you know one in the in the chamber um, but after that it's not going to cycle and you're going to be sitting there effing around with your gun when the, uh, you know somebody's attacking you and, and or something like that you know you're not pulling your gun can still carry unless that's a, you really need something the, so the trigger here about. trigger um Really, really don't like the trigger. It, it, it's a purposeful trigger. I will say that. The reasoning behind it is um, it's got a really long trigger pull because it's a concealed carry gun. So this trigger pull, it's double action only, and it just keeps on going forever. It's smooth and it's, like that's nice, but I show the reset on that too because the oh, reset yeah. is also atrocious, man. It's ridiculous. This trigger pull or this reset is pretty much the full length of the trigger pull. Still going, still going, still going, still going, still going. There's the That's reset. terrible. That's the whole trigger. And you have to and you can pull again. Very long, so, really long reset. Yeah. Follow up shots are not easy. And it's heavy. Yeah. Nine pounds. Nine pound trigger pull. Not not something <laughs> that I'm super excited about. I feel I, I understand the reasoning behind it is a concealed carry trigger. They don't want it, you know, going off easily or anything like that, but I feel like you know, uh, a Glock trigger safety or something like that's a lot better way to go and, and a much shorter trigger reset as well. Um, moving on from that, seating mags. Um, this is something I don't, I think it might just be actually be my extended mag that we've had the problems with. But and I think it is because that thing's a little yeah. loose. It might and need to be tightened is, up. Yeah, we'll show you here. It's, it's a little loose. I don't know if you can see this moving here. Um, and we could probably just tighten that up somehow. But um, when you push it in like this, unless you really smack it, a lot of times it won't, it won't seat. Um, unless you push down on the metal part in here. Um, and so that's kind of been annoying. It's just a little bit more difficult to see the mag than it needs to be. Um, and then the flush ones aren't as bad. You know, you give those good smack with your hand and it's in. Uh, so those haven't been as much of an issue. So that might just be, you know, my particular magazine. I don't know if anybody else has had problems with that. But we have, I wouldn't say we've had problems, but it's been an, a hindrance and kind of annoying. Um, another negative is this hammer. Like I said, it's double action only, um, so you can't, you know, pre-cock it or something like that. It does pre-tension the hammer, um, but that only takes two pounds off it, bringing yeah. it to nine pounds. Yeah. So it's it's a non-factor. It doesn't really do much for you. So, and you know, if for whatever reason you did have something back here, you know, pushing against it, you can't pull the trigger on it. Um, so what about the finish up know. here. What was that? This was originally a blued barrel. Oh yeah, right on top here. This is blued. You can see on this side, you, the bluing's still there. I don't know what this is. It's not rust, um, but the finish has come off somehow, and I don't know some sort of oxidation. I'm not sure what it is there. Um, so could just be the way the gun's been used. I haven't um, taken steel wool to it or anything. It, it might come off, but it's just kind of been a weird thing that's going on with this gun, and it might just be this gun as well. 
you'd expect a little bit better finish from SIG though. Yeah. So that's that's kind of annoying. It's not function related, it's just annoying. Um, and then the slide release on the negative side. Here's my when, next least favorite thing about yeah. this gun. When we're gripping this gun, um, our thumb gets dug into, I don't know if you can see, but this corner is actually pretty sharp when it's getting kicked back into your finger. And Josh has actually bled from it. For me, you know, even if you put five um, rounds down range, this starts becoming very, very irritating. This gun's out to get me, man. I can't shoot this thing without it causing me pain. Yeah, he kicks my butt every time. It's yeah. terrible. He has a worse time with it than I do, but um, it is annoying even for me. Like I just, I don't like it. It's, I don't know if they could, you know, bevel that off or something. But it looks nice, terrible. but functionally speaking, it is not comfortable. Yeah. And uh, if you're in pain while you're shooting, you're not going to want to shoot it. Yeah. And another um, kind of negative about this gun, it's not that popular. So there's not a lot of extra stuff out there for it. I was looking for, you know, um, a low profile mag release that somebody might make for it. But um, I followed him and tried to get in contact with him for like six months and nothing ever came of it. And I couldn't find anything for it. I can't even find the laser for it, you know. So that's kind of annoying as well. It's, I, I've had a hell of a time trying to find that um, and I can't. Um, other than that, uh, breakdown. Oh, breakdown. Breakdown's horrible. a beast, man. Yeah. And so we're going to show you. I'll show you. Some people um, have seemed to had to use like two guys to even do this or, you know, wood, like wood and a mallet to get this out. I don't know. I think they're doing it wrong or something unless their gun's defective because oh, yeah. it shouldn't be that hard. I saw a guy, he had to make a, wet, uh, a wooden block to yeah. specifically put into the chamber there, hold it open to where it needed to be, and then pound it out with a rubber mallet. That's yeah. how hard it was for him. So, um, so you, what you have to do is you have to get the slide back to the right spot, and then you'll feel when you're pushing this in, there, right there, that's the spot when it kind of releases the tension on it. Now, there's no way you can get that with your finger, you right? You can't get that out with your finger, no way. You, you have can to get tell it's else. in the right spot, but it's not going to go. Yeah, so you have to use something else like a screwdriver. So, um, the best way to do it, I found, is take like a, a, grop, uh, or a Glock kind of grip to it to, uh, to hold it back, get it back to where it needs to be, grab onto the gun right there, and then take this. Oops. Sorry, you probably can't see this punch it out and then pull it out the rest of the way it comes all the way out that's pretty pretty much as smooth as you're gonna see this thing taken yeah. down it is not easy yeah so and it's not like you can use a nine millimeter um, bullet or something to push that out it's too it's too narrow you know um, so that's just kind of annoying to have to do this but, gun is dirty we just shot it yeah we just got done shooting it we haven't had time we shot it late last night and haven't had time to clean them yet so it's pretty dirty but that, there's a polymer frame on it you know, rides on metal in there. Um, one thing I would have wouldn't mind if they would have done is actually made this guide rod metal. It's plastic, but you know, it's fine. It's whatever. It's got a dual spring setup on it. Um, kind of cool. An interesting thing about this gun is the barrel. Um, it is a bell-shaped barrel at the end there, and what that's supposed to do is ensure a, t a tight lock up here, so that your barrel's not moving around at all. It's supposed to improve accuracy. Um, whether it does or not, I'm not sure. I, I would assume it probably does help a little bit. Um, I know some then, people are probably going to want to say that they're going to get debris caught up in there, that yeah, going to snag on uh, something and cause a malfunction. You know, the way it's shaped, I think it's going to negate any of those issues. Yeah. And, you know, uh, that's not a factor to me. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. And it's got these little notches to slide out. So that's all there is to breaking it down. It's just it's just annoying. Getting it back together isn't bad at all. You know, put your gun back together like. Any other gun here, real quick? And it slides in. Pull it back to where it needs to be. Put this in. And then you'll see this little notch here has to be able to clear into that space, and you're good to go. So, yeah, that's all there is to breaking it down. It's not that difficult, but it's just annoying. It's it's more difficult than it should be. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it for the positive and negatives. Our overall impression of it. Um, value of this gun. You know, it's there's not a lot of people looking to buy it, so you might be able to find a good deal. Like this gun, originally, I'll show you on the side here, the price on it was 680 bucks at the store. I don't know. I do, I'm not the original owner of this gun, so I don't know if that's what they actually bought it for or not. 
but um, you know that's up there and, and the ones you see on you know gun broker or um, wherever are usually pretty high that's a lot for a pocket pistol it is a lot uh, um, I mean that's substantial especially since it's not like it's revolutionized something it's you know you can go get a car it's gonna the car is gonna be lighter than this it's gonna be the same dimensions and in my opinion you're gonna have better ergonomics um, still gonna have a long trigger pull but um, that's just personal preference there um, <clears throat> this one I picked up for 430 bucks, so it was actually a pretty decent deal. But usually, you know, when you find one, you're probably going to be spending $7,500 more than something like a uh, Glock 26. And I know that's not the same, necessarily the same gun, because it's, you know, double stack and things like that. But it's just a good reference point, you know, because I don't want to give you guys prices that you're going to find these for, just because it could be different depending on where you're at. Um, and then... After that, overall impressions of the gun um, is, you know, it's it's a good gun for me and for Josh as well, uh, as I'm sure he'll say. It just the ergonomics of it didn't fit our hands. We have decent sized hands. Um, they're not huge, but they're pretty large, um, and it just didn't fit us right. Um, we had issues with the mag release uh, and the slide lock. So. Those, those, are, those things, honestly, for me, they're deal breakers. They're yeah, that bad. Yeah, that and the trigger. I don't like that double action only trigger. It just, it's, it's not for me. Um, it's not, no matter who you are, you can't tell me it's easier to shoot a trigger like this than it is to shoot something like a Glock or an XD Especially trigger. Especially with that long reset for follow-up shots, it's, you have to go through the whole trigger again. It's just, it's painful to try to shoot accurately. Um, so if you're going to score this bad boy, where do you think you'd be? Um, my so we're gonna rank it out of ten, and um, when we give these rankings, they are rule based. For, so compared to other guns that fill the same role, so this is a pocket carry. You know, so as far as gun. pocket pistols are concerned, um, I would give it uh, for me because of the ergonomics of it and my hand. I would give it like a seven point two one eight is what it's gonna get. It's very precise. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to be exact on my. Uh, on my impressions of he it. He did a lot of calculations <laughs> coming up yeah. with that number. No, yeah, yeah, it's it's higher level math that you nobody else would understand because it's not real. Now I'm gonna have to say I uh, I more or less agree with that score. This thing is a well-made gun. It's solid. Construction is great. It's a Sig. I love Sig. I mean, a lot of things about it are good. It's got a lot going for it. On the other hand, as we were talking about that mag release, that slide stop, and that trigger are atrocious. And uh, for me, it's a deal breaker. Yeah. Absolutely. It is not enjoyable to shoot. I don't have fun when I'm shooting it. Um, and if I had to depend on it for my life, I don't know if I'd have that much confidence because of all the problems I've had. Max dropping out, jamming into my finger, accuracy problems with the trigger. I'm going to have to give it a 6.5. And I know that sounds low. I like SIGs. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, to me, this is probably my least favorite pocket pistol I've ever shot. And these are our scores. They're subjective. For somebody else with a different hand, you know, or a different grip, this might be an eight or a nine. Especially, you know, if you don't mind that trigger. Um, we just yeah. don't think we think you can be more accurate with a better trigger setup, in our opinion. Absolutely. For some, yeah. If it fits your hand, go for it. You know, you might not have any of those problems that we encountered. But for us, uh, I mean, we're sticking with the six point five and the seven, whatever the crap you said. Two one eight. 7.218. Yeah, whatever. We're, we're going to go with a 7.2. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you have it. That's our review of the SIG P290. Uh, it's a pretty little pistol with some issues. We out of here. All right.